Hello to all YouTubers and welcome back to another video review by New York Stilo and today of course we're going to cover the other Anthony Calfo poster that I have here, Anemones and Clownfishes and Illustrated Guide. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did on the previous video on update number 65 and we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, what's been going on here today. Now the previous video was day number 65, uh, this is day number 70. So it's been five days that I haven't cleaned the glass and I did this for a reason here. We're going to take a closer look here. Now I have yet to clean the glass and that is because I've gotten quite a number of questions uh, from people telling me how often do you clean the glass how is it that you keep the system uh, you know so spotless like that uh, the truth of the matter is that um, you have to control the nutrients guys gotten so many questions about different algae situations ever since I released a video of uh, um, marine plants and algae and uh, people still seem to be a little confused about lighting having something to do with it it's the nutrients guys if you get rid of your phosphates and you get rid of your nitrates and silicates guarantee you that your system will not develop so much algae now in this particular case I've added I feed the system two to three times a day in trying to ensure that my clowns spawn. I haven't added any animals yet, uh, you know, to the system fish wise because I don't want to interrupt them. I want to make sure that I capture this on video and get these guys uh, to spawn here. And so, once again, guys, nitrates, phosphates, and silicates make them disappear from your system and your system is going to look like this and it's not going to develop so much algae when you feed your fishes or your anemone in particular you make sure that you feed very little you know instead of giving him one cube of ice and the food floating around the entire aquarium give him a pinch of that cube and then come back an hour later or two and feed him a little more when you're at home uh, this is how they eat in nature all day and so I'm trying to encourage them to spawn hopefully that happens uh, quickly here also wanted to cover that I've changed the position of some of these corals here now this one in particular we're gonna start with the Brett's purple red Montipora Capricornis is positioned in this way here I was able to slide it in and kind of create like a like an overhang uh, you know the weights similar to what these corals look like in nature also did the same thing with the other piece of the red uh, Montipora Capricornis the system is just doing absolutely great the corals are just opening up like there's no tomorrow lots of growth recovery here with the bushy Acropora no longer bleaching but I did have to discard a lot of that coral uh, you know everything is just doing absolutely great and I'm really happy uh, you know with the overall system here also uh, here is the candy cane coral that was located in my 30 gallon nano system I've since moved it over on this side and I think I also took the green star polyp rock here which is gorgeous this rock itself uh, beneath the rock is just full of um, different tube worms and different colors and different um, feather dusters here and there so the system is just absolutely doing beautiful one last thing I wanted to cover before we move on to the poster is the water changes lots of questions a lot of people asking me how is it that you uh, you know have not done water changes or do not plan on doing water changes in six months I'm here to tell you that it is possible for you to do that if you set up the system similar to the way that I have done and you learn a little bit more about the chemistry you dose your system accordingly you can save some money on salt in about six months I'll probably do a water change or if something goes wrong with the system I can do a water change you know easily that's not a problem I just haven't done it yet and the system is just it's it's sparkling here I mean no nuisance algae once a week I clean out the glass I clean out the back make sure everything is tidy and a week later we do the same thing when it comes to maintenance so very easy to take care of when you set it up in this manner and if you have any further questions about the 90 gallon system uh, certainly don't hesitate to hit me up and so we're moving here to the anemone and clownfish uh, poster here uh, we're gonna cover it similar to what we did with video number uh, day number 65 uh, of course each one of these uh, posters here uh, this one in particular is a different color 
uh, let's start out there because the marine plants and animal one I mean the marine plants and algae one is a green color of course because it's talking about you know uh, plants and animals but this one here is black uh, sort of like with a lilac color is in much better condition than the other one I'm actually considering framing this one up and maybe positioning it here up on the side of the wall not too sure I have to discuss that with the wifey but um, we're gonna cover it similar to what we did on day number 65 and so we're looking at here of course these posters are gonna give you the scientific name and the common name it's gonna also give you the suitability the size and growth the uh, special needs of this particular anemone the remarks and which clownfish uh, you know, and which its ability to host basically. And so, here is the carpet anemone. You guys can pause it and definitely read that one there. Now, here is the long tentacle anemone. Had this anemone several times, not a big fan of it. Uh, some clownfish tend to ignore it, but if you do get wild caught uh, clownfish, they will definitely dive right into this anemone. Uh, here's the information for you guys to pause it. I'm not going to read all of it because we'll be here all day. But here is the sea bay anemone. Now, this particular anemone, which has two pictures of it here, this one in particular, I did purchase one back in 2005, and I, I restored it back to health. It was, it was white, and I did mention uh, you know, that there is no such thing as a white anemone, and we're going to cover that. Uh, the ones that you see here that are white, uh, you know, definitely died or you need to restore them back to health. In order for you to restore these animals back to health, you have to feed them daily. Feed them daily, offer them pristine water quality, uh, definitely offer them uh, the correct lighting and the such. And you guys can pause it and take a look at this one here. Now, here is a dyed artificial color uh, various different species so when these anemones are away from the sun uh, for a long time they expel their zooxanthellae and you will see it here it, it actually says under suitability dyed yellow or pink zooxanthellae expelled this is not what you want and I did a video detailed video on rose bubble tip anemone care you guys might want to uh, go into my channel and definitely take a look at that Oh wow, I almost dropped something here. But um, here is the sun beaded anemone. You can see a picture of it here. Lots of information here. Uh, here is the information for you to pause it and take a look at its care needs. Now this one here, the magnificent anemone. These are one of the most beautiful anemones out there, guys. Seriously, but they grow so huge in our systems that it would just be extremely difficult to keep uh, within a year I mean this thing is like three times its size never had this anemone actually but uh, here is my favorite the rose bubble tip anemone you got a picture of the green one here and you have a picture of the red one here and the information is there for you guys to pause it and take a look at it if you want to now here is a regular green anemone here um, you guys can definitely take a look at this one, pause it there. Uh, here is a green picture of, I mean, here's the anemone, a picture of the anemone there. And here's a pink tip anemone, also known as the Condi. Now these are the hardiest anemones that you guys can possibly get your hands on. Uh, the information is there, I had one. I've had several for many years. But uh, here's a picture of a Condi that's bleached. And here's a picture of a Condi that is not bleached. And so, therefore, do yourself a favor. And if you see this animal bleached like this, stay away from it. Now, here, absolutely very important. This is glass anemones, also known as Aptasia. And you can see a clear picture of it here. And you can see a picture of it there. And you can pause the information here uh, to make sure that you know how to deal with it and uh, its care needs. Definitely, you want to eradicate that type of anemone from your system. It'll sting your corals, guys. Now here is a tube fire anemone. Let me just fix this for you guys. Apologize for that string there, it just keeps hanging. But um, here's a tube fire anemone. I have seen these on the local fish store. Uh, never really got any of them. 
never really called my attention you know they look kind of poisonous and whatnot but the information is there for you guys to read here's a picture of it over here on this side is a dwarf anemones various different genre and here is a picture of it here's the other picture of it and you can definitely read the information there now here the propagation of anemones this is why this is such a really good poster I mean it's actually showing pictures here illustrated pictures of anemones that split it'll actually tell you how to deal with it or split it or if you should leave it alone and all the information is here you can pause it over on this side and then you can pause it over on this side and take a look at that information now here below is the different species of clownfish uh, uh, they call them anemone fishes and Ferion I I'm not even gonna try to do this. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to uh, you know uh, call out this thing the way it is am Fiprion. I'm not sure but that's it sounds like that's what it is but here's a picture of um, two different clown fishes here and here's a Clarky clown and another one here and now below uh, temperate and subtropical these are actually different uh, uh, species of anemones uh, that come from deeper waters so um, it might be cool water you know what I'm saying here's some pictures of it here and here's the information in case you want to pause it and here's the last picture here now I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick video here um, forgive me for my mistakes while I'm uh, making the video my videos are raw and unedited but I'm very happy about the overall progress of the system many more videos to come I'm gonna see if I could release uh, at least a video weekly here I'll bring you guys some new products reviews and everything else lots more videos to come hope you guys have enjoyed it New York Stilo signing out Peace.